You're listening to Nurture Your Zest. I'm your host, Ashley King, and I will introduce you to a wealth of interesting, fascinating individuals from all walks of life who will share their stories, how they've overcome challenges, and you will find out their top tips for success. Through this podcast, you can gain tips to grow and change your life and the way you see the world and help you to nurture your zest. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Nurture Your Zest. Ash can't be with us this week because she's self-isolating. We don't think she has coronavirus, but we don't want to be taking any extra risks for anyone who is visiting us in the studio here. So my name is Tim Lazinski. I'm usually the producer. I'm silent in the corner. But today I'm joined by Grant Murray and Karen Elliott. So please, Grant, can you give us a little bit of an intro as to who you are? Yes, I can. Thanks, Tim. Um, so, yeah, as uh, Tim pointed out, I'm Grant Murray. I work for XE.com, uh, the financial institution that does money transfer and foreign exchange. And I often help out up at Newcastle University with my good friend, Karen Elliott, who's sat to my left. So, yes, Karen, please give us a little introduction to yourself. Hi, so I'm, I'm a senior lecturer in Newcastle University Business School, and I call myself a pracademic. The reason I call that is that I've got industry background and I've also been in academia for 16 years. So I bring together practical and theoretical knowledge. So um, it is a bit of a hot topic at the minute, and not least because we don't have Ash, um, who we hope will get well soon, get well soon, Ash. Um, but can we can we talk about coronavirus? Um, we'll call it coronavirus uh, as a shorthand for COVID-19 um, what what impact grant so far are we starting to see this is having or will continue to have on the economy <clears throat> well it's kind of a, a where do we start question that one um absolutely massive impact um not just here in the uk uh but all over the world um just this morning um we've seen the us federal reserve drop interest rates to zero that followed the uh, reserve bank of new zealand and the bank of canada the bank of england cut rates uh last week so in terms of economic impact just on interest rates has been absolutely massive um and then you start to look at stock markets um which before we came into this room, I saw the FTSE was off another 10% today. Even the likes of gold, which have been traditionally a safe haven, are being sold as funds liquidate um, their gold assets to go and buy um, other stocks where they've got margin calls. So, yeah, you know, it's really broad brush. Uh, US dollar sees a little bit of support. So, you know, without me going too deep into the economics the ramifications have been absolutely massive and when you uh, put that alongside um, the oil apocalypse that occurred last weekend um, between Russia and Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia uh, saying that they're going to flood the market with oil you have got the recipe for uh, massive market moves. I'm going to try and avoid the word disaster but you know if you if you're holding equities globally it pretty much is a disaster because uh, your portfolio is probably worth about 30% less than it was about 10 days ago. So that's a, a very broad brush um, touch on what's going on. And we can probably go deeper into that as, uh, as we uh, go through the podcast. But uh, yeah, massive implications for everybody everywhere. Is there, a, um, is there a number? Are there a number of sectors rather than is, are there a number of sectors which you think are most vulnerable um, some some are quite obvious yeah. that come to mind, but um, so go through the obvious ones and then give us some that might be a knock on effect that we didn't consider. Yeah, I mean the the, the most obvious ones are uh, the sort of the, the travel airline sector, uh, lots of flights being cancelled, people unable to travel from one c- country to the other, um, and then you know everything within that supply chain. So restaurants, uh, other forms of transport, people in the hospitality industry absolutely decimated in terms of numbers that are coming to visit them um so any tourist hotspot is getting um you know getting really badly affected but the knock-on effect it um hits absolutely every part of the economy so that's probably um the most uh, the most obvious one um 
And then you kind of look at uh, the likes of, you know, I suppose supermarkets, the one um, that uh, that are hitting the press momentarily, um, mainly because you're starting to see um, people hit the supermarkets and buy, you know, ridiculous amounts of anything that they can get their hands on, from paracetamol to pasta to, uh, to rice and um, tissue paper. So just, just to clear up, you're saying that has an effect. Uh, an average person might think, oh, supermarkets are doing really well. They're selling out. Um, but uh, just briefly, can you explain whether that is a good or a bad thing for an average supermarket? Yeah, I mean, you delve into the sort of supply and demand side of the uh, of, of the economics. So you imagine that everyone's going into the supermarket. First of all, you know, it's got to be they've got to have more staff there. You then start to go into the sort of zero hours contract side um, of how supermarkets operate here in the UK. And, you know, let, let's be clear, we're talking about the UK here. We're, we're, we're not talking about um, other hotspots like Italy, Spain, France. In the US, but here in the UK, I mean, just speaking from my uh, my own experience yesterday, um, I went to um, a certain supermarket chain at uh, at ten o'clock when it opened, um, not because I was going to go and sweep the shelves, but actually just because that was when I needed to go because my kids were playing sport later on in the day. And, you know, my, my, my first um, the sort of first representation of what I was going to find when I got inside was that the car park was full never full at 10 o'clock in the morning when I go there um, and then getting inside and, and coming up to particular aisles I mean I went and bought two loaves of white bread purely because they were the last two loaves of white bread that were left on the shelves and I felt that I should own those <laughs> I don't quite know what the sort of behavioral yeah, so... psychology behind that is Karen <laughs> but you know it sort of made sense to me at the time and I, I felt a little sense of pleasure as I uh, as I moved up the aisle with my two <laughs> loaves of white bread don't so, know why they're in the freezer survival now survival of the fittest <laughs> so Karen can you you are by all intents and purposes a pracademic I am um, and your your job should allow you to tell us why 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 does this happen? So why is there panic buying? What's going on? What's going on in the individual? And what's going on in, in the masses? Why is there a why is there a huge amount of people buying toilet paper, for example, uh, despite the fact that it might seem counterintuitive to everyone who stops and thinks for a second? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it goes back to to when we were hunter gatherers as well. So if I just explain backgrounds in behavioral psychology and sociology, so what the brain does and then how it enacts in the social setting. So if you look at what's happening now, I think as we've discussed that there is an interpretation of what has, the messages that we've got from official bodies that we need to prepare for a lockdown. We've seen examples on the television. It's constantly on Sky News about what's happening in Italy and Spain. Um, examples of people outside all day. So it's like herd mentality. And on the one hand, we've got, we need herd resistance to the virus. But on the other hand, we've got herd mentality that we need to have food. And I would say it's particularly focusing on toilet paper because as we discussed, the word sanitizer has been everywhere. So we need to be sanitary. We need to wash our hands constantly. We need to use sanitizer. So if we roll that back to behavioral psychology, what happens is we get, and my, some of my students, Ash, will be familiar with this, the amygdala hijack kicks in. So what's that you say? Okay, go back to the good old hunter-gatherers. You have the response, fight, flight, or freeze. That kicks in in 0.02 of a second. And then cortisol rushes into the body. So on the emotional side of our brain, we have all, are we under threat? It's a threat radar. That's basically what the amygdala hijack is. On either side, we've got the logical side that says, really, we don't need to buy 20 packs of toilet roll. There will be sufficient as the other messages have gone out. If we all buy as much as we need, like one packet of toilet roll each week, we'll have enough to go around. But the other side, once the emotional side takes over, we become a little bit slightly irrational, but also kicking in that we need to survive. So if you think about it, that's why we've got the rush to buy the hand sanitizer. We don't have hand sanitizer anymore. We don't have toilet roll anymore. And like Grant says, I've had a similar experience going to the supermarket. There's nothing on the shelves. I think one of my neighbors reported I could get four tins of beans and that is it. I mean, um, 
I usually get my groceries delivered and looking on there, you can't get a delivery until the end of the week. So what we've got is the perception of what the issue is that we're going to have lockdown. Therefore, we need to hoard in order to survive. So our selfish kind of motivation, our intrinsic motivation is we need to have the ability to survive no matter what. This virus is coming, so we need to be prepared. And on the other side, it's like the irrationality if we see groupthink incarnate we see people buying all this stuff so we think well like grant after you decide i felt like i needed to have those loaves because everybody else has done it so i don't want to be the person who's not prepared so this is why you're seeing this kind of behavior coming out i mean i i was um i was in a small bargain type shop of which there are many and um it was early days it was sort of mid mid to late february um and and there was a lady in front of me and I had already noticed the um, the product on the shelves was small bottles of hand sanitizer, um, and it was said limit ten. And I just looked at that and thought, I don't need any. Um, but when I got to the till, and there was a lady in front of me, and she she'd taken her ten, like, and I just thought, wow. would you have taken ten if it said no limit? You know, would you have taken ten, or would you have taken what you needed, or you thought you needed? Or would you and, have taken twenty if there was twenty as yeah. the limit? And then, and this woman uh, may not have been born during World War Two, but um, hmm. our rationing didn't finish just at the end of the war. And I was thinking, is this a rationing thing? Is it just your allowance? So therefore, take it. Yeah. Because and again, it's back to the rules, the norms. So that now becomes the new norm. Hmm. So we're we're under unprecedented times. So the the norms of society, norms and values are changing. So it's kind of command and control. We're now in that situation. You've been commanded to prepare. You're now the supermarkets now in the position of giving you the control parameters. You can have ten. So we go. Well, we need ten. It's almost like a default position, but because of course we've got this slightly irrational side coming into our behavior as well that we need our limits that's why you're seeing people buying out all the toilet roll just so we've got enough we don't need it but we perceive at that particular point that if we're allowed 10 we're going to take our maximum quota i mean i i was only in there to buy um some toothpaste or something and then <laughs> but then i was at the till thinking maybe i should get my 10 yeah because and that's a power was, of suggestion no, I don't need them. I don't need no. any. Like, I, I, and I'd rather spend three pound ninety on something else. Like, I had other mm. priorities with my money. Um, are people? Is that going to have an effect on? Um, that's got to have an effect on people's ability to spend where they really otherwise would have been spending. Yeah. So, if everyone's <laughs> putting paper. all their money in toilet roll and hand sanitizer, <laughs> are there? Is the is is that going to have a knock on effect with the? More, more disposable. Uh, those both are disposable things. Yeah. More disposable. Well, we did the it economy. Already has. <laughs> it already has. If you look yeah. at if you look at the reports that people are not buying clothes, not buying other items, they're conserving. It's kind of we've gone into this mentality, this perception that this is our priority, and that's the way it seems to be going. I mean, you just have to look at all the reports. And you also get examples, like I say, from Spain, where I saw one yesterday, where they were literally stood outside Aldi and they were climbing over the top of the actual shopping carts to make sure they got in earlier to get the food. And they were just literally swarming in. So you can imagine the pandemonium chaos inside. It's like Black Friday, but yeah, all year round. Yeah, it's like around. Black Friday, but all year round. But it's now got the added... For the, the next added... four weeks, six it's, weeks, yeah. who knows? four months. Um, Ten weeks. Can you weeks. imagine the uh, nightmare in the accounts department, in the purchasing department <laughs> of, uh, of, the, of these said chains who have never had to deal... Sorry to bring it back to economics, but they're, they're, they've never had to deal with this sort of situation before, probably only apart from Christmas but they've got ages to plan for that period all of mm. a sudden it's upon us it's ramped up the supermarkets completely emptied um, of, of various products there will still be stuff left cat food dog food but I expect everything's going I mean I'm not regularly going to the supermarket so I'm not seeing the buying behavior although I'll, I'll just give you some news go on from the ground <laughs> please do I, I was around Whitley Bay this morning, yeah, and it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. There was, oh, fine. There was, it was like a Saturday morning level of busy, like so people were out, yeah, um, and almost everyone had something in their hands that was either a, a packet of toilet paper or some sanitizing thing, right? Um, 
but it wasn't like it was just one of it. It was quite everyone was quite calm and genial. In fact, it was probably more friendly than usual because everyone's like, yeah, toilet paper too. Yeah, um, yeah. but it wasn't so that's like not normal, is it, Tim? <laughs> yeah, but I like but that normal. You're calling that's it normal, normal but, it's, but it, that's not normal. You, do, you don't you don't see people walking around with one little bit of toilet paper. No, you do you? It wasn't. Know, maybe you do. It, but, but when I when I been saying normal, there was plenty of food on the shelves. There was a few like the pasta had gone yeah. in like the places, but there was plenty of cereal. There was, you know, there was fresh stuff. There was, you know, there was soup. There was plenty of chocolate. And and here's here's my. Um, we have a question from uh, Ash to ask you, which is, what was your top isolation items? And I'll tell you mine, chocolate, <laughs> right? And I'll tell you why. Dark or milk? If you buy white, probably somewhere in between. Um, but milk chocolate, <laughs> the d- calorifically, okay. calorifically, not a lot of difference. I've looked mm-hmm. into it. Um, okay. If you buy a two kilogram bar of chocolate, uh-huh. okay. that's enough calories for for a ten day lockdown mm. on its own. Okay, so two hundred grams a day. But don't go and buy chocolate, yourself. everybody. <laughs> oh wait a second. Can you, you ration two yourself kilogram? to two two squares or four squares or whatever squares it is per day? Well, on that topic, Grant, <laughs> come on. What about rationing? How does that work? Like you ration yourself. We had a little discussion beforehand about rationing at the end. I'm not that old. I, 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 don't, I don't know what the rationing rationing kit You were talking was. about rationing toilet paper when you get to the end of the roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Do you want me to talk about that? Yeah, so if I have a 20, if I have 20 hundred gram bars of chocolate. Yeah. And How quickly is he going to eat the chocolate? Yeah. Let's, let, let's, what, use, what let's use the, cho- let's use the <clears throat> chocolate. Um, it's much more pleasant. The chocolate mm. analogy. Um, yeah. So if uh, it's a bit like Christmas, isn't it? OK, you, you've got Christmas and you've got a box of Quality Street and th- there are other boxes of chocolates available. Um, and, and it's not the BBC. You can do whatever uh, you like, man. OK. And a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a box of roses. Um, I don't know. And a, a, heroes. A box of <clears throat> box of heroes and, and, and some matchsticks, maybe. I don't know. Depends what kind of family you are. Matchmakers, you mean? Ma- match- <laughs> matchsticks. <laughs> a little match girl turns <laughs> up at your Christmas party. That's the kind of family I'm from. You know, we've got matchsticks. <laughs> Um, Rationing. So, yeah, and and you you you've got the choice there. You've got fifty, a hundred different chocolates you could have. You're going to pick up maybe I don't know five, seven. I don't know. I mean, you obviously like chocolate, Tim. So you tell me. But the favorite uh, one. I'm just like first. it's a high calorie. The favorite ones first. High density calories. It's got sugar. It's got fat. It's got a bit of protein. Yeah, but surely when you've got Quality Street, you've got a favorite one. The green triangle, the purple one. I don't use. I don't need Quality Street. It's Nestle. <laughs> Right. Right. So, okay. Moving on. So what got, chocolates do you like, Tim? So we've got we've got we've got the chocolates in front of us, and the point is, there's a hundred chocolates there, as opposed to three chocolates. Um, are you going to pick up a handful of chocolates, or are you going to take them one by one? Karen, maybe you could explain to me why you're likely to take more than the ones you normally would. Because you will perceive that the position will change. And sometimes in in state of emergency, you will just because they're there as well. So the temptation is We're there. We're talking about Christmas, not state of emergencies. This yeah, is but even Christmas, it's just it's just there. Christmas is a state of emergency in Karen's household. <laughs> well, it could be, but um, anyway. So if you're at Christmas and you've got an abundance, it's just, it's there, so you can take it. And everybody, it's well known. It's a social norm. So back to social norms. At Christmas, you eat, you drink, and be merry. That's the three sayings with Christmas. So if you've got the chocolate there, you're going to eat, drink and be merry. And you won't just take one chocolate, you'll take several chocolates because nobody's going to say to you, oh, you're going to be eating that. They'll just say, it's Christmas time. Yay, eat it. So I say go back to yours when you're in a time of when you've got to ration yourself. I think this goes back to Grant's point. Are you able to do that or do you in fact do the analogy of toilet you've paper? You've got three big bars of dairy milk in mm. front of you that you've gone and bought in panic because chocolate is your thing. Never a panic. To survive. (laughs) And, okay, you've bought 10 bars. um, And they're they're in front of you. Are you more or less likely to eat more of the chocolate now? And then as the ration depletes, you start to to ration yourself. That is is human behaviour. And so this then comes right back to the economics of this whole sort of behaviour of going into the supermarket. You've gone and bought all these things that maybe you don't necessarily need. You've got far too much pasta and tin tomatoes that everyone's eating for goodness knows how long. Um, 
then what happens to the supermarket and you know the accounts department who are having to plan for what do we buy next how how are we how are we planning or uh, you know and and we've got the situation where borders are getting closed flights are not coming in we import an awful lot of food in the UK all of a sudden this stuff isn't getting in is that why people are behaving the way they are have they had the foresight to go now hold on a second you know the the plum tomatoes come in from Italy the pasta comes in from Italy that's not gonna, that's not going to come in I need to stock up because it doesn't look like we're going to get their exports for the next six months do people think that deeply I don't they know they are making an exception for I some think, exports though so. it's fair enough with the Spanish and the Italian tomatoes but I'm pretty certain nice. the pasta we buy is not made in Italy <laughs> <laughs> but but I wouldn't be surprised if people are rationalizing somehow that, that that's a, there's connection. a supply chain issue yeah. well I just when did. it's like the uh, uh, the Australian lagers that are just made down the M6 <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one is there, there may be a supply chain issue somewhere down the line but it's certainly not getting it from where it's made to where you drink it um Okay, so um, I've that, said. Does I've that answer s- the question, Tim? Or, it answers or, the question you... about the rationing mentality okay. and, the, and the rationing. A bit like um, the bit of the, the the easiest example is when your toothpaste is about to run out, because it's the kind of thing where you don't necessarily have one spare sometimes. And like when you first use it, you're squeezing the whole lot out on your mm. toothbrush. Yeah, that's. And a then good at the analogy. end, you're like, "Oh, I've got a few days to go and get myself another one of these." Yeah. And you kind of cal- calculate mentally, oh, I should really be careful with this. Um, but um, is that why is that why products come in big packs? Is that deliberate so that we use more? So here's a twenty pack of crisps. You're going to eat loads of these now, or, or perhaps not necessarily individually portion things because then there's a portion. But if you create an abundance, an abundant sized pack, a mega pack, yeah, like people will use it you more quickly. More. Yeah, this is the, they're scamming us. Well, this is, this is, our brains. Well, yeah, this is this is the whole marketing ploy, isn't it? To, I mean, when when you when you had supermarkets and all of a sudden they had to go healthy, <laughs> all the chocolate went from near the the tills, but they were all replaced with you know healthy popcorn, healthy this. But still, to encourage you to buy in abundance, just be a bit more healthy. But is that why? Is that messaging. why they started by going only ten? Yes, only ten, and because uh, I thought, is that deliberate? When you say only 10, everyone's like, oh, do I need 10? When the limit's quite high, because they've got to have thought only 10. How many have they got? 100? There's 10 people buying 10. Mm -hmm. They've got to know we're going to sell out of those. Are they, I mean, am I being being paranoid? Is this a deliberate attempt to make people feel that they should buy more in order to boost? I don't think so. No, not in this case. Not in this case. Defend the supermarkets for me. Um, Not really, but... Not in this case. <laughs> Maybe if you, you know, with a buy two, get one free kind of offer. Yeah. But in, in this situation, I mean, the, the first time I experienced it was last, and I put this on LinkedIn, last Friday, I believe, I went into um, into Tesco in the middle of town there. And um, the, the staff looked really stressed. And uh, one in particular, and I asked, are you okay? She said, oh, I've had a really busy, really busy day from the moment we opened the doors. Um, and she said, it's just been been manic in here. People are panic buying. And I was quite surprised. Um, and um, she said that they were limiting everybody to five items um, of of anything. Um, and so I, I sort of probed a little bit deeper. I said, right, this is real, this is real world economics. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? And I said, what was it like yesterday? And she said, nothing like today yesterday was pretty normal but for some reason on friday i don't know what it was that people had read or acted upon but they decided they were going to go in there and they hit the shelves for the various things that we've uh, that we've described um so and water was one of them she said mm. people were buying lots of water I wasn't aware that we were about to have a water shortage but no but i suppose if there's nobody there to run the waterworks you know, if, if people get infected in theory, if you are in that panic state of mind, you think, oh, well, the workers who are sorting out water and sanitizing the water back to sanitizing, then they're not going to be there. So we're not going to have any water. So we better get bottled water. OK, so it's, it starts going across. People start thinking across all the foodstuffs, including water. Part of, part of me suspects that um, it's, a, it's an American influence for things, for all of this, um, because they are... They definitely do things a little bit bigger than us. Um, and in America, if... Chocolate's bigger, Tim. 
<laughs> yeah, chocolate is big, <laughs> but it's also disgusting. So let's let's not go there. Um, but in America, um, it always surprises me when you find a community that actually they can be cut off from water quite easily by accident mm -hmm. um, because their infrastructure is so large and spread out. It's nothing like here where it'd be like, if I burst water main, you can, you're probably going to be on by the end of the day. It'd be unusual for it to be out overnight. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in America, whole towns can be just out um, because they, they only have one water supply and something happened and it'll take forever before someone finds where that's happened. Um, and so buying water for emergency situations is, is a lot more a thing they do. So if we see if we see Americans on television, because supermarkets you can't really even tell. Like if no. you think, oh well, that's that's over there in the other part of the world. That's in Australia. That's in Italy. That's in America. It's not happening here. Um, even if you could rationalize that part, you don't know necessarily with the images you're seeing where is where is this happening. No, that's and what I'm saying. You can't because the define it. yeah, because it's also this is a global pandemic. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's happening over there. It's still probably going to happen here as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so people buy what they what they global see. Global diffusion by by watching too much TV or reading well social media in particular. Yeah, social media where there's no context given. No, it's just images. Well, it was like the image of Aldi. I don't know. I'm presuming that was in Spain because the Aldi logo was slightly different to what it is in the UK. <laughs> so I was presuming making an inference that it wasn't here, but you could see that will probably come here, and that's what people watch. That's what people yeah look at all the time. And so the question still stands. I said chocolate. Oh, what's your what's your go? What is your go to? It's the thing I need if I can't get it. I'll be missing out. Does it have to be food stuff? Or can yeah. it be what item? What are your top items? What do you need? This is yeah, but this is yeah, this is a this Don't is like tell a, me it's toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a it's a desert desert island item. Disc, yeah. <sighs> well, I told I told you what mine is, but it's 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 quite bizarre. But oh, God, I'm going to say it: cotton buds. <laughs> That's your fast moving cardboard, consumer cardboard good ones. right there. <laughs> um, yeah, couldn't live without them. <laughs> don't blank, wanna, blank I don't want to ask around the why studio. You, I'm just trying not to think why or where you need <laughs> these things. I mean, maybe you're making a matchstick house out of cotton buds. It's a sanitary item, though, isn't it? I think I think sanitary item. I would think go. I'd probably have to go borrowing and go water because I just drink a lot of water. Okay, but the ta tap's not good enough for you. Well, I mean, if the taps go off, then so if we're excluding tap water, then I'd want water. If if water was available. Then um, I guess it would be fruit, like raspberries and strawberries. Frozen ones. To live off, possibly. Because they only last like three days. Yeah. <laughs> so Bread. you're on uh, lockdown for 14 days and you're like fruit. Yeah, but uh, I'm allergic to wheat, so I'm stuck. Ah. Uh, I have to think. Rice. Rice. Well, rice, yeah, I suppose. No, I, I uh, think in, sorry, it's too late. There's none left. None left. There's no, none everybody's left for bought you. out rice. No, um, I was, ration <laughs> I was rationed to two. Make a sandwich out of anything, can't you? <laughs> Sugar sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, like we used to eat sugar sandwiches Leaf when I was sandwich. young. Yeah, when you, sandwiches. Everyone had it when I was a kid, I'm sugar sure. Sugar sandwiches. Um, okay, so in all seriousness, though, what is the best way to remain calm when everyone else is losing their heads? Well, I think I've seen a movement on the, on the radio this morning. They're calling for this, to look after the LD, et cetera, to only buy what you need to buy. And I think that is starting to permeate. There's lots of items going out on the radio saying different communities are texting the elderly etc who may or may not go into isolation soon if you're over 70 and i think it's sort of helping to say oh the norm needs to be adjusted by trying to be kind so that term be kind is coming back out again to say you know be rational think about others mm -hmm. think about if you buy all this stuff there's nothing left for anyone else and i think so if more of those messages come out then the social norms I'll start to change again. If that becomes the more dominant norm, then okay. things will start to change. For me, it's communication um, and um, talking to as many people as you can about their own um, sort of situation. So I have a couple of group chats that I'm on, lots of friends in different parts of the world, asking them what's, um, what's going on in, in, in their life and how they're reacting to it. And, you know, the, the, the replies I get, are, they... they differ wildly depending on which country they're in i've got so the cultural in influence as well australia spain france who are who are all saying different things um you know i'd say that londoners are saying different things to geordies you know i was in london last week 
was very the streets looked very different in terms of the sort of demographic people wearing masks that kind of stuff gloves compared to say up here um you know cultural differences but yeah that's a long way of saying communication is the way for me to keep calm and did you say rationalize karen Mm -hmm. rush yeah that helps me rationalize what's going on to understand how everyone else is thinking yeah i did think um one of the things I might try and do on my social media, just just as a public service, was to photograph full shelves that I found, <laughs> and be like, "Look, it's not yeah. all bad." Because if you're only if people are only going, well, I don't normally take photographs of shelves, yeah. but there's some empty ones. So then all you see on your social media so the is counter. lots of so like yeah, say that's kind of the, trying to reset the brain yeah. to, to to calm that panic down. I mean, while we're off, we all go all maybe read Professor Steve Peters' book, The Chimp Paradox, to understand why the chimp is going crackers. <laughs> <laughs> glad you mentioned the book um because that's educational okay so finally um ash would ask you here if she was here uh what's your number one word to nurture your zest um how do you keep your head straight when it's a tough time yeah well the, the thing that came straight to my, my mind when you asked me the same question in the room before we came here was was resilience we all need resilience in this time of difficulty so you know kind of dig back to when you've had to be resilient in a previous situation and try and practice that uh, that that same approach so yeah resilience and you Karen and dolphins oh wow that's um, an answer you won't get you're in dolphins okay to go on, Why, you can elaborate Karen? a little bit. Elaborating on dolphins, because when, you, when you're, like exercise is my release, that release is happy endorphins, keeps you calm. Okay, so proactive endorphins, yeah. not just waiting for them to kick in and go, no, 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 no. it'll all be okay once, I, once my fire yeah. flight calms down. Um, all right, so there let's are. have a little discussion about the opportunist at this point okay yes well, was, briefly a, funnily, funnily enough i was gonna i was i was yeah. gonna say i had a had a chat with a couple of other financial people this morning and one of the um one of the questions was there surely has to be some opportunities amongst all of this isn't that the dark side of entrepreneurship but it's a it's a reality side isn't it you know there's always there's always going to be these but the dark side it, to to tragedy somebody will always make a profit out of somebody's downfall Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So the question to me was, what stocks would you be buying or what types of stocks would you be buying? Um, I think uh, Evian might be one of them after, uh, after, after, after this discussion. Cadbury's are owned by Kraft, is it? Um, Mon- Mondelez, they've replaced the name now. Ah. Uh-huh. Anyway, I mean, I don't know. Expert. So, you, you, you know, is it you know is it is is it is it long term stuff like Coca Cola, um, Apple? You know, actually, a Netflix going to absolutely get ravaged because people are staying at home and and watching box sets. You know that 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 kind of stuff. So people are already thinking in this situation. You know, is, is there a way that I can benefit from this and? You know, just going very quickly into my world and where I operate in in currencies. And actually, currencies don't necessarily behave in um, sort of direct linear fashion with how stocks in that country behave. So whether you're on the import or the export side of the coin, depending on which way the currencies are moving, there are opportunities for you um, for you to do something that might benefit your business. However. If you're unsure what your order book's going to look like in the next three months, six months, 12 months, depending on what supply chains look like, it's also quite difficult to know what you need to buy or sell. So, you know, it, 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 these are these are never ending questions that we're going through at the moment. What do you do? But this is how you'd behave in a in a normal circumstance. I don't know. I don't know what the um, academic definition of that is. But this is this is an, a, 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 um, an abnormal circumstance that you're having to try and sort of add some normal behavioural characteristics mm-hmm. to. So you ha- if you had normal controls from an academic perspective, if you're doing quantitative analysis, you control for the normal expectations and you'd be able to predict through the models in economics. But because the controls have slightly shifted, then you're going to get the potential for a spurious data because you just don't know where it's going to go. And of course, the system can adapt and change 
because it's complex what's happening. So you could get an emergence of something in one area where you didn't expect. Yeah, there's like there's a gentleman in America who cleared out all of his regional shops from all of the hand sanitizer. Oh, I and saw he had this. seventeen thousand bottles or something. Yeah, and then Amazon and all his reseller opportunities just went nah and knock and banned him. Right. So then he's stuck with a warehouse full of sanitizer, um, which he may or may not have put his his original principal money back into. Um, so. This is. I saw that, and uh, I was chatting with someone, and I was like, "This is like the tulip bubble," because suddenly it's worthless because mm-hmm. you can't do anything with it. Even though people do want it, it's going to be worth. No, who who would buy um, sanitizer, you know, in ordinary circumstances from a bloke with it in his garage? You wouldn't. There's no opportunity to sell there. Mm. So, yeah. are we going to see um, uh, bubbles burst? Oh, absolutely! What, uh, not, quite <laughs> and, like, and not and not uh, not soap the sanitizer water bubbles. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think we're I think we're in for um, you know without without going into sort of harbinger of doom mode, we are going to see further follow through um, into various different various different sectors, uh, um, you know, all the way. Obviously, from the from sort of travel um, and recreation, leisure, all all of that sort of stuff. But you know, Bitcoin's absolutely collapsed. Oil's obviously gone under thirty dollars. Gold, as I mentioned earlier, has gone lower. You know, at some point, these things will have to reverse. That we, we will we will have to find a bottom. Have we found Have we found the bottom yet? No, I don't think so. And, and I, I think and when we do, will there be enough toilet paper? <laughs> Tim, <laughs> sorry, and you said two things that had to be asked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so on that on that very very hygienic note, um, I think that's all we've got time for. So thank you very much, Grant and Karen, for joining me. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. You've been listening to Nurture Your Zest. You can find us online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Nurture Your Zest. If you've liked today, please subscribe. You can also leave us a review if you're feeling extra kind. Today's podcast has been made available through the kind sponsorship of TL Multimedia and That Branding Company. We look forward to catching up with you again soon as you learn to nurture your zest.